Hey guys, good whatever time it is where you're at. It's currently, I don't know, 11 o'clock, and I'm behind a Publix. I'm not sure if this is completely legal. It might be trespassing. I don't know. Might I might be incriminating myself. Anyway, just wanted to bring up that uh, we met the 500 subscriber requirement for the No Name Nationals, and that's just amazing. I, I, I didn't think we'd hit it in a day. That's... Oops, that's insane. I, some people you might have a lot of time on your hands if you're watching us. I'm just kidding. But um, I hope that we do bring some good content with what we do have. Um, John also thanks you. He's not here right now. He's probably asleep. That means that I could pretty much just get away with saying whatever I want to and he's not here to refute that claim. So that kind of works out for me. Anyway wanted to bring up my 1965 Plymouth Sport Fury. This is my first classic car. I've had it about four years. I say first. It's my only one. I've only had this car. I don't really plan on having another one unless I get a garage big enough. When I got this car, I literally had zero clue of what I was doing. I had never owned an old car. I just knew that I wanted something that was classic a muscle car, something with a V8, and it had to have two doors. And those were the filters I set on Facebook. And yes, that's where I found this car. I found it on Facebook. Uh, it was originally listed for $5,500, but I was able to trade straight up for uh, my old uh, 2005 Sportster X, uh, 1200. And the guy actually gave me 300 bucks on top of it. So that pretty much paid for the tow home. I mean, this car sat since 87. It had tires from like 1985 on it or something. The, the latest registration document I had was 1988. It hadn't been tagged or anything in a long time. So I did test drive it though, but it, it's just, it was not in any shape to drive home. Those tires would have exploded. <clears throat> So when I was looking at the ad, I was looking for, like I said, two-door V8, classic car. And when it when I read V8, it said poly 318, and I knew that was a V8, but I didn't understand the poly part. <laughs> and let me tell you, there is an important distinction to make between poly and LA, uh, mainly that nothing fits between the two, except for like the distributor and the timing cover that's pretty much it and that's a bit of a problem especially when you're a college kid uh who has no money getting this kind of car in the first place so uh, i quickly realized that nothing really fit but that was after i rebuilt the transmission so once i rebuilt the transmission i also did not know that <coughs> Mopar big block and small block transmissions are different and not interchangeable. And once I had that transmission rebuilt, I couldn't afford to just swap it out for, you know, a big block or anything. I wanted to, I was planning on big block swapping it, but then I was like, well, I've already rebuilt this transmission. I might as well just try to build the polyhead. And I did. It only took a year and a half and it took, you know, help with my fiance and all my friends, we all put this car together. And uh, it's, I, I would honestly do it all over again. I have the original poly head out of this car in my shed right now. And when we pulled it, it had stalactites coming out of the freeze plugs. It You could gauge how much oil was being burned by how fast you were going and how many miles you put on it. It was a mess. But I do have to say something about that poly head. That, that thing was in horrible condition and it ran for two years. It, every valve was clicking. It was, it was just bad. It was, and up until the day that I drove it over to my buddy's house to begin the engine swap, it never left me stranded except for the one time the transmission went out and I had to drive it home in reverse, but that's, that's a whole different story. Anyway, the important distinction to make, like I said, between the poly head and the LA is that nothing is really interchangeable. You got scallop valve covers that, you know, you can't see it on that side, but scallop valve covers 
that's a good way to tell that you have a poly head and not an LA, uh, especially because the poly head will only have two bolts. You can see down there, see the scalloping? That's how you tell for people that don't already know. The only real modern part on this engine is the are, are the headers. Those are TTI. And if you know anything about Mopars, or even if you don't, TTI makes very nice headers. Most people will, in the Mopar world, I, I from what I've seen, say that TTI does make the best Mopar headers. Um, I didn't necessarily get TTI because they make the best. I got them because they make the only. <laughs> and so those are the only ones that fit. If you have a poly head, you're either A, building your own headers or B, buying a TTI. I didn't have the skill. I still don't have the skill to even consider building my own headers. So I just got the TTIs and they fit perfect. It was the easiest set. I, everybody said that installing headers is a nightmare. I believe it, but these were not. They were very easy. So I've got a bit of work that I need to do to the car. Uh, it does need an interior. It has what I like to call uh, seasonal upholstery. Every time it gets warm, it you know the duct tape comes off. It's a uh, it's mostly duct tape. I would say that right now it's in the fall season, so I probably need to just you know cover it back up. See that one's already in winter. That one already fell off. The steering wheel that was in this car is actually the steering wheel that's in the junkyard jet right now. I tracked this wheel down about two years ago. The only problem is is that the the center cap is wrong. The Sport Fury center cap is supposed to come out and it has a little red medallion in it. I recently fixed the speedometer. It's a uh, it's still twitchy. I don't understand why. But you know, without going too far into it, I am doing my best to take care of this car. Mechanically, it's completely sound. It's got it's still got solid lifters. It took a while to learn how to adjust those. Maybe sometime I'll do a video on that because I I am confident that I do know how to do that. But I never updated anything. I even, people told me to upgrade from the points distributor to HEI. Yeah, well, I did upgrade. I, I went to Mallory Dual Point. And uh, instead of going to like a Sniper EFI, I went with the AVS2 four barrel. But this car is coming along. Oh, there is one thing I did update. I did update the brakes. Uh, just the master cylinder though. It still got four wheel drums, but I converted it to dual master out of a 68. That's probably just a safe idea to just, to just do that. Because the single circuit brakes, if one wheel cylinder blows, the from from what I understand, you have no more brakes. So, so I went ahead and just did that because why not? Uh, and I did change the rear leaf springs. Uh, if you step far away from this car, you notice it's got a bit of a rake. It was, is because, um, the, the leaf springs, when I got the car, they were completely flat. They were not really doing anything. They, the, the car would just sag. So I decided to try to straighten out the leaf springs i couldn't get anybody to fix the original ones to recurve them or anything like that so i started trying to track them down they're near impossible to find i uh ended up finding a set in michigan some new old stock c body convertible springs and there's a bit of a difference between those in that the weight of the convertible top uh, in the back makes a difference in what kind of stiffness is required so they have an extra leaf and when we put the new springs on it, it it just sat like that that was not completely intentional actually i'd say it's not intentional at all but uh, but what was intentional is the air shocks because now it's got uh, gabriel skyjacker air shocks that also was just because the shocks that i put on it before kept blowing so now it's got air shocks and I just kind of hid the nozzle in the plate itself. Anyway, that's a bit of a walk around in my car. There's going to be more on this as well as John's Cadillac. If you remember that car, that big, big, beautiful boat of a car. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed. 
I want to thank everyone again for subscribing, helping us out. It's, it's truly amazing. I'm, I'm glad that that y'all helped us out. We really appreciate it. John, like I said, John does too, but he might be dead. I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out next time. Anyway, thank y'all. Catch you the next one.